Hi guys, it's Bubba from Bubba's Melties. So today's uh, video is a quick one just really on all the different types of wax available for uh, baking wax melts and the pros and cons of each. It's like one of the um, biggest uh, obstacles that you have to try to overcome when you first start making wax melts. There's so many to choose from and so many people saying this and that and the other and then you've got to deal with um, rumors about certain waxes as well. So let's clear it all up now and I'll give you a base of where to start uh, depending on your needs and your customer's needs as well. When I first started out, uh, the first wax I played with was beeswax um, simply because I was making my own beeswax candles. I used to make them all the time um, because beeswax has healing properties and um, so that was why basically I was using it. Problem is with beeswax, it is expensive and uh, much more expensive to use and obviously not vegan friendly which a lot of my customers prefer the vegan friendly option even though it's cruelty free, even though the bees are wild and free and happy <laughs> and not harmed, doesn't matter. Okay so that had to change but what i will say about beeswax um from a wax melt point of view the pros and cons for it they make amazing um shaped wax melts they have longevity they can withstand a lot they have more flexibility as well um so it has all of that going for it um, and it is pretty much the wax that you would see being used in, you know, the wax seals of olden days on envelopes and stuff because of its bendability. It's definitely a lot more flexible. So when you're making like shaped wax melts, especially a more complicated shaped wax melt. Um, I don't have one handy here, but oh, like even something like this, which is very hard to get right without things breaking off. Um, if you're using soy, so beeswax works really well for that kind of thing. Um, beeswax is more expensive, so that, you know, I had to try to kind of find a way for it to bring the price down because you know what, you're still competing with other wax vendors. Um, and if yours is more expensive, simply because your wax base is more expensive, mm, you know, people don't really care that it's like got healing benefits, that it's good for the bees you know all that didn't really matter so what I did do then was I started to kind of water the beeswax down with what is very popularly known as soy wax um soy wax is super super popular um so I did melt it down with um the beeswax I started with 50 50 just to see how it all handled it did really well and I got it down to about 20 80 like obviously 80 being soy so that helped with cost um scent load was still fine it wasn't really hugely affected and um yeah it worked really well still wasn't good enough uh, from the vegan point of view <laughs> so i had to try to find something else and of course cost was still a little bit there too so i did move on to soy eventually and um, the other problem with the beeswax if you're using 100 percent beeswax trying to remove it from a burner is not easy once it's set even the freezer method things like that they were much harder to remove from a burner uh the best method was basically to use you know the cotton wool or cotton pads in it to remove it that way so yeah i wanted something easier um for the customer point of view not really from my point of view but from a customer use point of view and also to honor um my vegan customers as well so that was when i started moving on to soy soy ah uh, Soy is a drama all on its own. <laughs> there are so many different types of soy out there. Um, and I know that it can get very, very confusing. And I know that soy is extremely popular. It has insane marketing behind it. Um, but just always be careful that the soy that you're using, make sure it's a high quality stuff, not the GMO and like big farmed ones with oh right so just always look into your supplier once you're in with your supplier and I do have a, a video there of you know various suppliers that are quite reputable and good so really check into that there when you are going for soy one of the biggest mistakes people make with wax melts is they use container soy container soy is better for this kind of thing <laughs> a container candle and um, so yeah don't get that mixed up the other option is pillar 
wax from the soy line um it can be used obviously for pillar candles but also for wax melts um especially the shaped wax melts um various issues as well with wax melts um from a soy point of view with it being more brittle um with having a it melts easier basically um so yeah when you're shipping it around the world and it's going somewhere and there's a heat wave on it's it's not fun to ship so i wanted to strengthen mine as well but what i'll tell you is that there are a few different soy waxes out there there is the golden wax i always get these two mixed up i should have written it down and double checked it's either a 464 or a 494 one is for wax melts one is for candles it will tell you when you look it up so it's fine um so it's quite a popular one golden wax also do a melt and tart um wax melt and it's pretty good actually i quite like that one and um, the only problem with both of those is that i find them quite soft so when you're trying to make all these shaped wax melts you know i'm well renowned for my shaped wax melts so I do find them a bit more brittle, a bit softer. They don't really hold the shape to the mold as well. And again, for traveling, because I ship all over the world, they can not do so well in the travel world. Now, if you're just doing uh, the likes of a clamshell with it, the Melt and Heart one, I find it good. Or even blending the Melt and Heart with the 494 slash 464, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so... That works really well. I also use the Kerasoy Pillar. Highly, highly recommend that one. It is a much stronger one. In fact, any that is pretty much made for pillar candles makes a really good shaped wax melt um, soy wax. Um, and I do find they handle it better because obviously they're manufactured to be able to withhold shape, to withhold um, the large pillar candles, the shaped candles, if I any sitting around, I do a cauldron candle. I use the pillar candle wax for that. So yes, they work really, really well. Another option, I know there are there's um there's palm wax, there's rapeseed wax, there's all kinds of other wax. The other wax that I have worked with is coconut wax. Uh, it's okay, it's good. It it has a good cold throw, it has a good hot throw um it can hold a decent amount of fragrance oil it has a more of like strength to it and a bit of a color to it but i still find it more crumblier than the wax i use and the other problem with the coconut wax is that there may be people who have an allergy to coconut so you do have to bear that in mind if that's the route you want to choose um finally the one that i do work with at times and have always found very very helpful is paraffin wax now don't cancel me for saying paraffin wax is good. <laughs> okay, Ugh. right. Without going into too much detail, because I'm not getting into this whole debate over paraffin wax, all I'll say is do your research. Um, you really should do that regardless of what wax you're going to choose. If you think, you know what, this wax here might be good for me. Um, always research. Research deep, because I did. However, a few years back when I did beauty therapy, um, we worked with paraffin wax for hand treatments, feet treatments, that kind of thing. So we were taught a lot about that wax, its origins, where it's coming from. Is it harmful? Is it not harmful? Blah, blah, blah. We were taught all of that. And it is not this bad, bad thing that everybody thinks it is. And in fact, if you use the right paraffin wax, the high grade paraffin wax, there is no harm in it from my research, in my opinion. Um, and I do find that it is harder, stronger and helps with shaped wax melts. Now, obviously, I don't need it for these, <laughs> but for some shaped wax melts, like the more complicated ones, I would add like, seriously, about 5% paraffin, sometimes less, just to give it that wee bit of extra strength um, to help it hold the shape. Um, what I will say is that the paraffin wax that I use is the very high grade. It is for the beauty industry, the pharmaceutical industry and the food industry. Um, so it is the best of the best of the best. Um, and yeah, there is literally nothing wrong with it. Um, a lot of the big, big companies use paraffin wax too and all their candles and stuff. Um, 
it just has a bad reputation. It didn't get the good marketing that Soy Wax got. That's basically what I think. I mean, if you Googled Soy Wax 2 and looked into the cons for it, you will see that it's over farmed. You will see that there's GMO. So there's issues regardless of the wax you choose. So all I can tell you is to go to a good reputable, reputable supplier slash manufacturer and um, yeah, work with it and see what you can get. Um, like I said, for the shaped wax melts, if you want to get a more complicated shape, I do recommend blending in a little bit. Like I did start off with a 50-50, but it didn't need it. Um, and I got it right down to between, say about one to 5% paraffin in some of my wax melts just to maintain the shape. Not all of them. Um, I do kind of blend other stuff too, but it's all soy. It's 100% soy for a lot of mine, for about 99% of my wax melts now it's 100% soy. The odd one, especially customs and stuff, may get about one to 5% of paraffin added, depending. But I obviously, I'm not gonna give away my formula. It took me years to perfect, but you're getting the idea. Anyway, and those of you who are smart, you will figure it out. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's that. I do think that there are so many on the market, and I know there's a lot of people who are saying, look, I'm only starting out, what wax do you recommend? You know what? Just get a kilo bag of, not even a kilo, like a 500 gram bag of like a few different ones that you're kind of eyeing up that you're not sure about um, and play with it. Um, obviously start with soy pillar wax of any format. Um, I do like the golden wax melt and tart. It's pretty good if you're just going to be using clamshells and things like that or small molds. Um, that don't require a lot of shaping and flexibility and stuff but as it comes into the summer you'll want to harden it up a wee bit and the pillar wax is definitely um highly recommended and like i said there are so many other waxes out there these are just the ones that i've worked with and really really understand um, but look, if there's anything that I have kind of not really touched or got into a bit more information for you, just comment and let me know. Don't be afraid to DM or email me as well. Um, I am happy to help. I really am. Um, there's a lot of people out there who don't want to help, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> um, and you know what? If it can help you on your journey, even just starting out, then yay. And if you really find this helpful, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. It would mean a lot. Anyway, bye guys.